Spencer, you're looking jacked, my guy. Jacked. My name is Spencer Oldham. I am from Idaho. Uh, currently right now, just uh, seven weeks out from a show out in Houston, as well as uh, the goal is to chase a pro scar this year. So it's my first run at it. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, I've been working out for about a little over seven years, but especially the last four years have been dedicated to bodybuilding, competing in men's physique, but also trying out classic this year. So yeah, just get, you just gonna test out the waters this year for classic and uh, overall just love bodybuilding in general and just love fitness. Well, how'd you actually get into fitness? High school, I always played a lot of sports. I played basketball, played tennis, uh, did cross country. So then it was more of just a substitute after high school, just not playing sports all the time. Um, then I spent a mission in Malaysia and Singapore, ate a lot of noodles and uh, just started gaining weight. And basically, I, it's not almost like a rock bottom kind of moment, but I just went to hit a workout where we just went on a run with some of the guys that I was working with out there. And there was a, not going to lie, he was a definitely an overweight guy that I was going on a run with and he was keeping up with me the entire time. And I was like, damn, I ran cross country in high school, played basketball, played tennis, played volleyball, always physically active. And here I was just like, just huffing and puffing. And then I went home and looked in the mirror and I was just like, oh, okay. Like I wasn't super fat or anything like that. I hold it pretty well, but I definitely stepped on the scale and weighing about 135 pounds, 140 pounds in high school. And then weighing almost 180 pounds, just like pretty much chubby all over the place. Like, okay, this is, I can't do this anymore. So that's when I started actually like, it was more just like cardio and then uh, started to incorporate just like calisthenics, doing a hundred pull-ups, hundred sit-ups and a hundred push-ups a day. That's how I got started. And then uh, just getting my hands on weights whenever I could, because luckily I was with some guys that actually taught me how to like the basics of working out. But then in the mission that I was serving, I became that, that missionary that was just like working out all the time. So every single morning I'd get up an extra half hour just so I could do 30 minutes of cardio and then 30 minutes of a workout at least. And then got home from the mission. And then since then I got a gym membership and never looked back. Uh, I remember doing this workout. It was a uh, hundred pull-ups quarter mile as fast as you can. And then two minutes of push-ups, and you'd repeat that like three or four <laughs> times. I oh, mean, shoot. after that, after that, it was like a week I was dead. It's what I did in the military. And it's, it's, it's not like weight training for strength and muscle building, but it's the same as far as just the physical exertion, whether or not you're working on endurance, stamina, muscle building, bulking, cutting. When it comes to the first off, having the mindset to even understand what you're doing here, right? Working out, training, whether it be with exactly. weights or wh whatever you're doing, but just think going all the way back to when like the cavemen were rubbing two sticks together physical exertion is what we were actually made and bred to do for survival so simple, really. when it comes yeah. to working out and training when people look at working out and training as a as a chore as a task as a burden that's where i say okay you don't have the right mindset because that's what you're supposed to do right yeah that's what the body was built for to survive it's like you know no we have grocery stores we don't physically go out with spears anymore so we have to go to the gym in order to or else you're going to get big and fat and get internally unhealthy you know what i'm saying yeah but well, i think people what, what are you shocked. and spencer you know are under or explaining is the willingness to commit that's why we're all fans of health and wellness here how long has bodybuilding been on your radar? Was it something like as a kid you were interested in or was it something that just kind of popped up, you know, right around when you started doing it? Oh, heck no. I remember uh, back in high school. Um, first of all, I went to like the kind of weird flip kind of high school, especially being um, kind of more of like a churchy school, I guess you could say. There's a lot of LDS kids at my school. Basically, like the popular kids were more the artsy kids, like you were in theater, you were in band, you were in choir. So like the talented kids, there was a lot more of them compared to like, the track stars, the football players, the basketball players, that's where the jocks, like, yeah, they're still going to be, like, acting like they're running the school. But then the gym rats, there was, like, three guys in my high school that actually, like, you consider gym rats, which, let's be honest, I'm way bigger than they ever were. But um, I remember seeing them. I was just like, I'm never going to be that because they – looked like idiots they yeah were those typical meatheads that you'd see and I was just like yeah I would never be into working out ever I was just into I was just into playing sports I stayed lean I had abs back in high school just because I played a lot of sports so looking back now it's just like oh shoot like when I started working you out play in high school Spencer what sport I, I played tennis I played basketball cross country dabbled a little bit into like baseball just a little bit of everything I've always been athletic so and this I is what I'm sports. talking about Daniel 
bodybuilders mostly, and he, he's not even a pro. He's competed a couple times. But when it comes to people that get interested, that, that I feel like are fascinated and even sometimes make the decision to go all in and compete in their first show or whatever, they all tend to have a background in sports. You didn't know, Spencer, correct me. Did you even know what an offseason felt like? It just seems like you were going from sport to sport to sport to sport, right? Right, yeah. I would play a sport every single every single season. So definitely weird even doing an offseason because then goes like, coach was like, hey, you, you got to bulk. And I was like, oh, bulking, what's that? I just play sports you. all the time, stay lean. Yeah, but see, that's the physical exertion. That's you going back to, I'm just trying to survive and thrive right now by being an alpha male and just dominating all these sports and trying these different new physical challenges, you know? Right. Bodybuilding is year round though. That's it's the sport of bodybuilding is just so different because I got into bodybuilding back in, cause I started working out back in like what, like 2014, 2015 It's very sporadically mm-hmm. is all over the place. There's more just like stay lean, just be healthy. And then I met my coach back in 2017 had been bodybuilding ever since, but it's just so different that, bodybuilding is year round there's the off season which a lot of people take it too far and just get super fat but you got to be able to actually get your protein and go to the go train six days a week five days a week whatever you hit i go six but it's just there's so much more that goes into it and there's no rest to it but i love it there's a lot of people yeah. that consider the off season as a time to like kick back and relax eat what you want it's just like nah the off season is my prep for prep I'm going to work my ass off when I go into the <laughs> yeah. you know since you played so many sports and you kind of talk about like in Haskell, not having that off season, did you feel like when you started bodybuilding that you almost took it maybe too hard at the beginning because you're just used to going, like going, 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 you didn't give yourself and you know, you're not enough time, your body enough time to uh, recover maybe at the beginning. I'd probably say that recovery for me in the beginning wasn't really that bad because going from like playing sports, which like basketball, tennis, and all these sports I did play, like it's very cardiovascular. So I feel like almost bodybuilding it was like slowing it down because then it wasn't doing as much cardio but it just feels different when you're lifting heavy weight and you're like pushing yourself where no matter what you're going to lose because I find it where benching or squatting no matter what the weight's always going to end up on the floor but then trying to battle as much weight as you can up but then for more and more reps it's just as completely different style of training compared to cardiovascular running around swinging a racket shooting a ball whatever it is so okay Spencer, I feel like recovery I is just question. yeah not to cut you off there but do you think that in turn when you met when you made the transition because I did track I did all of those I did a lot of running stuff but um do you think that helped enabled you genetically did that give you a predisposition to be a little bit ahead of the pack when you made the decision to, okay, let's start actually translating this into strength and conditioning, muscle building, weight training? Oh, absolutely. For sure. If anything, it primed me for being even competitive, but just uh, overall, just having the training capacity. Yeah. I went from Mm -hmm. a completely different type of training to a completely different one but it's not like I started from ground zero like I had a great cardiovascular health but then probably recovery was better but overall just like the training capacity I had there is now just being shifted into a new method so I definitely would say it primed me to be able to start getting into fitness building muscle I just had to learn kind of the ropes when it came to the new stuff when it comes to like the team sports or even a sport where you're you're by yourself but you're facing like one other person how did that like how did that all those years of doing that make it feel weird when you started bodybuilding? I think I love the fact that bodybuilding is a very individual sport. Yeah, you have a coach. You could have, like, guys that compete with you and stuff. But in the end, it's all up to you to do the work. Like, the results that you get are strictly on you compared to I did play a lot of team sports. So in the end, like, I could do my part, but we could still lose. So in this situation, like, yeah, it is competitive where I compete against other people on stage. But the results that I have and beating my personal self – being better every time I compete, that's all on me. It's my choice whether to do the work or not. So that's just where I like that this is a completely individual sport. I'm in the driver's seat. I got to do my best to perform and to bring my best. So that's what I do really like about bodybuilding. And that gives me kind of this uh, crazy idea. And, you know, Cam, tell me your thoughts on this. (laughs) Doubles doubles bodybuilding. So here's my thought. Here's my thought. You got a teammate. And let's say you got maybe you got – 
genetically you didn't get gifted you know a good right bicep but you know your training partner has a great right bicep so <laughs> wow okay. doubles bodybuilding we're just gonna start this Daniel, up. <laughs> what they used to do back in the day well first off they had couples competitions to all like the routines yeah you had like- the top female competitors and the top male bodybuilders join forces and they would actually make creative and cool routines which that was kind of a cool thing. And it got both genders involved. They also used to judge back in the day, they used to stack them up and they used to do, okay, who has the better biceps? Who has the better uh, vacuum? They would do not necessarily mandatory poses, but they would, uh, it would be added on to the judging criteria is okay. Who has the best calves? Who has the best, who has the best side tricep or who has the best vacuum? They used to actually do that. It would be like a little rapid fire challenge round where they would get the audience involved and they would have the audience vote, bro. And, you know, kind of like they do the fans most popular. They just added that a couple of years ago. Who got it this past year, Spencer? I don't know. It was, uh, uh, was, it? It was Hottie Chupin. Hottie, 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 yeah, Hottie got it. And it's like the people's champ. But, yeah. you know, they used to do more stuff like that. As far as like, okay, well, who do you think, you know, I don't know, but they used to kind of do stuff like that, but dual, dual bodybuilding. Wow. I don't know. I kind of like the individuality of it. Like yeah. Spencer was, was talking about. I like the fact that it is all up to me at the end of the day on show day, whether or not I have a coach or not, but you know, I don't want to have to depend on somebody else's anything for this, <laughs> for, <laughs> right. you know, uh, right. Our backgrounds are in team sports, and trust me, that was that's what taught us honestly the work ethic, the patience, the discipline, you know, in order to work towards a common goal. But when it when it was when it when we made the switch over to bodybuilding, and Spencer maybe can uh, ad lib on this, it was like wow, now I have full control over over you know all the cards on the table right now. I don't have to defend on the O line to block for me anymore. I can make my own hole now. I don't need them. You know, I don't need, I don't need anybody else's assistance other than myself, you know, and it's a you versus you. And I think for everybody, when we hit that kind of threshold in life, you know, when we're, when we're really kind of just figuring things out, you know, I'd say ages late teens, 16, 18, all the way to, you know, it can go all the way to 30 longer for some people but those are the honestly i call that the honeymoon phase of life i'm still in that honeymoon phase it's more of an exploratory time for me to kind of take risks and pursue the passions and the goals before you know the time gets kind of start the hourglass becomes inversely proportional and there's more sand on the bottom than there is at the top you know what i'm saying so Mm -hmm. when bodybuilding it's like a you versus you to where i can guarantee you spencer has taken some of those same character traits that he's developed since immersing himself in the sport of bodybuilding. And he's applied that to his job. He's applied that to his relationships. He's applied that to many different aspects of his life that originated and spawned from him enduring the battles of just, you know, doing bodybuilding because he's doing it. You know, he's not out here faking it. Spencer has done it and I have followed him for, it feels like an eternity now, but you know, I think it's been a couple of years since I've known him. He's, he's right around the corner. He says he's going to get his pro card this year. I firmly believe he's, if he keeps doing what he's doing, the pro cards is going to be guaranteed by the end of this year. It's not, it's going to be a no brainer, but it's the you versus you. It goes back to that. And that is the element that when body, when elite bodybuilders or competitors like Spencer, when they make the decision to really immerse themselves and commit to the process and trust the process and everything like that, that is uh, a very powerful thing because then you realize, okay, you know, you have the gift of pushing yourself outside of the comfort zone. Now just don't ever 365 days a year. Do not ever let yourself get comfortable again until I win my next show until I get my IFBB pro card until I get on the Olympia stage. It doesn't matter what the goal is. As long as you have those goals set, 
then that's what's going to be the determining factor to keep you versus you from getting in your own way. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and as far as like sure. trusting the process goes, like, did you ever have a time, maybe a, just a brief day, two days, week, whatever, where it's like you started maybe to doubt it because just for whatever mm-hmm. reason in your life? Oh, for sure. Who doesn't have those mind games, especially if you're on prep, like even right now I'm experiencing that. I have my coach and uh, there are definitely days where I feel small and flat. And even honestly, yesterday was one of those days, but it's just trusting the process. You have a plan. And that's just where having a good relationship with my coach is great. He's there to support me, but working with together with him for four years, like in the end, I know I just need to trust the process, even when the mind games are there. So that's just where I'm trusting the process and that's, oh, I have so much stress, less stress, because when you have someone to rely on, because he's my coach, he knows my body super well. And who is your coach? Go ahead. And it's let's Brady. Get your coach yeah, Brady, Brady, Brady Oak Fitness on uh, Instagram. It's a team two. I've been with him for four years. I've been with him since the beginning of his coaching business. And uh, I guess you could say I'm kind of as almost like a star pupil, but everything we've accomplished together with my physique, his business has been amazing. So now we're taking it to hopefully getting a pro card here soon. But either way, the we're going to bring the story though. Gets behind. Tell the people the story though. Let them really know what the journey's been like and what risk you've taken in the past year to two years. You've moved. You've done a lot of things. You've made a lot of big moves, and you're not telling them. I want you to tell them. Okay, so I met Brady in college. Uh, his wife was actually teaching a weight loss management class, and in that class, we we're just learning like basic weight loss, diet tips. Uh, small training, cardio workouts and stuff. But um, his wife was just like, Hey, you look like, you know how to work out. You're willing to come to the gym workout. So my husband's really cool. You should meet him. So then she allowed me to skip class every single time to just go to the gym with him. And it was just where him and I vibed really well. He's just like, Hey man, like uh-huh. I see a lot of potential out of you. Have you ever thought about competing? I was like, hell no. Um, and then just uh, <laughs> developing a relationship with him. He was just like, Hey man, like if anything, just try it out for the experience. I'd love to coach you. It's something that I'm getting into. I want to learn. I want to practice and I want to see what we can do with it. So did it for the first time, ran through a prep. And honestly, the first time it did not go well. I was struggling with an eating disorder. Um, wow. I just didn't really know what I got myself into. And wow. uh, from there, it came to a point where I was like, well, what am I going to do? And then in the end, I decided, you know what? I'm going to do this again, but I'm going to do it right. And I did. I did a second year of competing, um, did so much better. And overall, now it's to the point where the next goal is get a pro card and uh, see where I can take it, hopefully in the pro leagues. But in the end, um, my coach and I have been together for four years, and uh, he's built an online coaching business where he is very successful. And um, some things in the work that I'm going to work with him on the business on here pretty soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, I actually dropped out of school pursuing fitness full time, getting my NASM done. And, uh, you're going to be working with him. Say that again, Spencer, so. say it for the people in the back that are like, but, <laughs> but I, I, what if I shut up, tell them, tell them what you did and how you're thriving right now. Guys, I, I dropped out of college. You don't need it. Unless you're a person that's trying to be a doctor, you actually need a degree for your profession. <laughs> school, I, in my personal opinion is the biggest waste what of time. What were you going to school scammer. for anyway? I was studying exercise physiology, which first of Come all, on. It's fitness these days, guys, you Come need to, first on. of all, you need to know your craft, which first of all, having a certification is great. Um, you need to have that if you can, but if you, as long as you have the certification, you can go get a degree if you like to, but looking the part or actually knowing your stuff is something that can come over time. But looking the part is probably one of the biggest things. Come on. We see all these big fitness influencers out there, which a lot of yes are super fake, Preach. but, uh, but straight up, like, look the part, but then actually have the degree to back it up if you can. But if not, at least have the certification, which I'm going with that certification. But then seven years of working out so far, four years dedicated to bodybuilding, currently and constantly learning always from my coach and from other people that are credible sources. And that's something where I want to take it into where eventually here pretty soon, I want to be able to online coach and train people as well, not just in person. Here's, like, here's the deal. You don't have to have a degree to get your IFBB Pro Card. You don't have no, to have don't. a degree uh, to do this bodybuilding stuff. Now, when it comes to personal training and coaching like that, yeah, certifications matter. But again, you've got a lot of these professors and things out here that have all these degrees, all these certifications, kinesiology, exercise science, pharmaceutical, I don't know, all of this stuff that they have. And then you look at them and it's like, well, sir, man, have oh. you ever com- competed before? Because it doesn't even look, you know, okay, if you're older, show me some pictures of you in your heyday or something. Because I need to see some visual, tangible, physiological stuff, evidence 
that you know what you're doing. I just don't want you to know the knowledge and just apply. Have you ever applied this knowledge onto yourself because you look like a pile of shit? That's what these people should be asking these online coaches that are trying to charge them an arm and a leg. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember back. I remember it was the first gym membership I got when I got back from my mission. I yeah. um, I went. To, I got got a membership at the YMCA just up the road, and it was just the weirdest thing because. It was a weight loss management class. It was like to get <laughs> shredded for the summer. And it was all like middle-aged women that were all overweight. But it was a middle-aged man. And he was like 350 pounds. He's probably never had a six-pack in his life. And I was like, wait, that's the instructor? I was actually thinking about signing up for this class. I was like, I'm so glad I didn't. Because walk the walk before you talk the talk, you know? I'm a person that firmly believes like practice what you teach. So yeah. I was just like, okay, if this is really what personal training is like, this needs to change. And that's where, when I really and got it's a balance. dedicated to fitness, it's a balance. I want to be it. Cause it's like, we all start somewhere, you know, uh, God given genetics, right? Everybody, whatever they've got, here's the thing. You can literally, it's never too lar- late, lard. It's never too late to start the process of what, of wanting to become the person that you visually want to become. Self-image, self-esteem, all of that ties into that too, right? But it's not sure. like people that are listening, it's not like, because guess what? All of us suffer to, to some extent of uh, the body dysmorphia. That's a, that's a touchy topic for, especially to some bodybuilders that you would never know. Body dysmorphia, it's a touchy subject. But when you talk about <clears throat> the ability, the physical ability, if you've got the ability to walk, you've got the ability to... To, to be mobile, then these younger guys that are really more gain interest into the sport, this is the time when you were younger, when your body is, is at its prime state, max capacity of what it will be, you know, until you maybe get into your, you can maximize it, but maybe age 40, 45 is when you start to plateau. And, and here's the deal. Bodybuilding is not just and I'm going to ask Spencer this because he's also a fellow competitor. What is your definition of a bodybuilder? Is it just somebody who has actually made the commitment to compete? Or is it somebody, what if I go to the gym every week and I eat healthfully, but I'm not prepping for a show. I'm not getting to single digit body fat. Is that still considered bodybuilding? no or okay what is your definition <laughs> tell it to the people because they they some of these guys out here think that they're bodybuilders and call themselves bodybuilders and they haven't really done it but what is your def- but some people they have different definitions what's your definition of a bodybuilder well it's definitely not let's be honest like there's a lot of bay boys out there that i talk to at the gym they'll talk to me at the gym and not to hurt their feelings, but they're just going to be like, oh, yeah, like, do you compete? I was like, yeah, this is my next show. This is my plan. They're like, oh, yeah, I want to compete sometimes. Like, oh, yeah, when? And they'll be like, oh, I don't know. I want to, like, get up to 200 pounds, and then I want to weigh, like, 190 on stage. And I was like, you have no idea what bodybuilding is, man. <laughs> just yeah. like, or the people was like, yeah, next year I'm going to compete. Oh, I'm going to compete next year. And not going to lie, I met this guy at the gym earlier this year when I moved back up to Idaho. And uh, he straight up told me, he's like, hey, dude, I'm going to compete in a show. And I was like, oh, yeah, when is it? He's like, oh, I'm going to do this show. And it's because uh, I told him what my show was. Like, oh, my show is like two weeks before. That. I was like, dude, like I'm about to start prepping like two weeks and you're like 25 percent body fat. I'm sitting here probably around like 15. Like you're going to have to cut really hard. But like, are you cutting right now? He's like, no, I start in a month. I was like, heck. And here we are. I'm seven weeks out from the show. So technically he would be five weeks out. And I don't think he's doing the show. The amount of people that say they're going to compete, but they never end up competing. Oh, just next year, next year. Oh, when I'm big enough. Oh, when I think I had enough size. It's like, so basically, it, Spencer, man. you're saying a bodybuilder who not only talks the talk, but walks the walk. Right, exactly. It's, it's like you live the lifestyle, talking. but you actually have the intentions to compete because you're never going to be ready. If everyone were to only compete when you think you're going to win, barely a handful of people would actually end up competing. Like, do I compete to win? Yes. Do I think I'm going to win everything and everything? No, I know it takes time, but that's what bodybuilding is. It's continual progression, pushing your body to the limits. Cause as you push your body to the limits, that's when you're going to be able to push on more side. That's when you're going to be able to push that shreds and conditioning, push your mental limits. That's just where every year you compete, you're supposed to get better, but that's because you hit your best 
but then the next time you do it, you push your best again, you get better and better. That's what bodybuilding is, is continual progression, continually beating your best. And a lot of people, they never try to get to their best. They're just thinking that I can constantly just push the standard and I'm going to improve over time. And then eventually when I feel ready, I'm going to compete. And then reality, those guys will never compete. I think too, it comes down to <clears throat> bodybuilding is one of the few communities out there where it's like, let's eat right. Let's train prep is kind of a little bit different because it takes it into that, like starting to get into, it's no longer necessarily about he the healthy aspect. It's more about, you know, getting on stage and that's a very short term thing. But like, I feel like bodybuilding is a community where a lot of people want to say they're in because it's comfortable to be in that community and be a healthy person. Kind of going back to what Cam was talking about, like people, there's so many people out there who just aren't moving their bodies. They're not eating right. They're not living like humans should live, you know, like they're a program to live. And the ones that are, they feel like bodybuilding is one of the few communities they can actually say they're a part of without like, you know, and they can like interact with that community without actually kind of being looked at as like, why are you so interested in working out? Why, why do you eat so well? Why can't you do this, that, and the other with us? You know, <laughs> it's like thing. bodybuilding is, is in the sport. There's, there's definitely like you're talking about the sport of bodybuilding is one thing. And then bodybuilding as a, like a lifestyle is, is a I'm a bodybuilder. I compete. Correct. <laughs> Here's the so thing. You can say that. you're a bodybuilder, but do you actually compete or are you following a bodybuilding lifestyle? Kind of. Right. Right. And here's the thing. You can still enjoy your life. Don't think just because you're a bodybuilder you, with, with people that think, body, why are you doing this to yourself, Spencer? Why are you eating like that? It, it, why are you killing yourself? It's miserable. No, we fucking love it. Why? Because, because we see all of the other benefits, the intangibles. What can they not see? All they see is, damn, he's eating that shit and he's busting his ass in the gym every fucking day. Why is he doing cardio at 4 a.m. and he ain't ate shit? Because he loves it. Why? Because of all the intangible benefits that comes with pushing Spencer pushing himself that hard. Okay? So the thing about it is anybody can freaking do this shit. You, can, you don't have to be David Goggins. He's insane. Those people are insane. But, you know, we look, I look at those people and I'm like, damn, if he's doing that, maybe if I do 1% of his 100, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Perspective, perspective. People aren't going to be able to eat what I eat. People aren't going to be able to eat what Spencer eats. But here's the thing. I eat, people know how I eat. All right, let's not even go there. But the thing about it is I am calories in versus calories out. Just as a, just the same amount of McDonald's Big Macs as I intake on a weekly basis, I am exerting that same amount of calories in the gym daily. Okay, so it's not like, and here's the deal: I'm only showing the bad stuff. Seventy percent of the diet is clean. It's the other thirty percent that people are like, "Oh my God, how are you still?" And it's not even goes down to hundred percent to genetics. It goes back to Spencer has been playing. He, he does not know what an offseason. He's been playing sports basically since his pre-adolescent years. And he was eating shit. He wasn't meal prepping at 15. He was eating whatever he could get his freaking hands on because he had to get out there on the baseball field. You know what I'm saying? So that it's the muscle memory. And he was training himself from a young age. Now you can start whenever. You can start when you're 50, 60, 80. I don't care. But it's about training your body to adapt. It's Darwinism. It's survival of the fittest, motherfucker. It is literally adapting to the ever-changing environment. So it's like, who? I'm going to want Spencer because he's a gladiator. I've got to ha have him on my side because he's already immersed himself in so many different environments that we're going to go out here and he's already going to be owning it. And that's bodybuilding. That's honestly what bodybuilding is, is you're literally just trying to become your own gladiator. <clears throat> and you're walking you know, you're walking amongst mortals, but <laughs> I'm not saying that you're above anybody, but you know what it feels like to put yourself in a challenging position to where you, you now like the feeling of being challenged. Notice Absolutely. how all the conversations we've come up to this point, it goes back to does he or she have the right mindset in, even, in order to even enter the process? Well, bodybuilders, you hear them say it's so much quicker. 
trust the process, trust the process, trust the process. Well, what is the fucking process? The process is you've got to have the right mental mindset in order to begin. Right. Most no, and I think have that's struggle with, I think. I think that's a good question to ask Spencer. Did like mm-hmm. you kind of mentioned eating disorder, something like that. Yeah. Was that. was that part of the pre bodybuilding, or was that something that you ex- started experiencing with the bodybuilding? Oh, it was a pre bodybuilding for sure. But then bodybuilding helped me to realize I had a problem, and I knew that if I really was going to be part of the sport of bodybuilding and do what I do, I couldn't have that problem anymore. It took a little bit of time to get over it, but since then I've been clean for two years now, and I'm in the best spot of my life. And that's just where. You could say bodybuilding saved my life, but in all reality, at least it helped me to realize I had a freaking problem and now I'm in the best shape of my life. And, you know, that's what Cam says as well. You know, bodybuilding. Don't be scared to to say bodybuilding saved your life, Spencer. Say it and you mean it. Bodybuilding saved my life. Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. And, And everybody that you talk to, everybody has their story. You know, Daniel, you've interviewed everybody can yep. can ins- can use that and say well if it wasn't for bodybuilding then boom if it wasn't for me you know challenge myself and immersion myself into this bodybuilding thing i would be people probably don't even want to think of where they would be that are yep. that are in it that are in this community that do it yep. but uh i think yeah, it comes down to self awareness i think overall just in bodybuilding you just learn so much about yourself cuz like we say it's an individual sport it's a mindset thing you just learn so much about yourself, what you're capable of, like what you're capable of, and just uh, how you can push yourself even farther and farther. And that's just where I know I was always that person playing sports growing up that when they say like, hey, you guys missed that shot, whatever it is, do 10 push-ups. I was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. If you want 20, I'll give you 20 right now. You want me to do an extra lap? I'll do that extra lap. That was very competitive where if we did have cardiovascular workouts where they wanted to like run a mile or if they want us to run a lap and then two to 10 burpees as many as you can in an hour, I'm the guy that's always going to lead the path because I just want to stay ahead of everybody. And I love pushing my body to those limits. I love feeling like something is hard. I don't want something to be easy. I don't want it to be where I feel like it was a breeze. I just love it where my heart is pounding. I'm pushing myself super hard. I'm failing reps at the gym because I push myself to the limit. I'm willing to do that. Even right now, like <laughs> this kind of sucks, but I think I have an issue with my meniscus or my tendon issue in my knee, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop going to the gym. For now, I'm going to focus on prep and get it done. Maybe I'll get it checked out, but unless my leg falls off, I'm still going to go hit legs, guys. I love freaking hitting legs. Okay. You ask your question. I've got a question too. Okay. I was just going to say, you know, from, from the, from that mindset, you mentioned like, I want to be like competitive. I want to be the person that leads the pack. Do you feel like that that is even, that that has even grown more that, that now that you're kind of like in your own, your, your own sport and now it's, it's, it's by yourself because you have to like, you know, lead the pack in order to lead the pack on stage. Oh, absolutely. Like, you know, I can't control who shows up on stage. Um, but I know, and anyone else will know that I'm going to show up at my damn best every single time. So if you are going to beat me, it's because you're going to be at your best too, because I'm not going to let you win because I'm not at my best. So my mindset is show up at my best, but I know the process with my coach and everything, but I'm always even willing to push the limits on that. Asking him like, Hey, I want to do extra cardio. I want to take away more calories this week. And he's just like, Hey, stay in your lane. I'm coaching. I got you, man. But that's just where I want to be at my best (laughs) and you can be damn sure I'm going to be at my best too. So I can't wait until I'm in my car headed to the glorious house of games because it's fucking leg day, but I wasn't going to miss this uh, podcast. So you might hear uh, the stuff in the background, but that's okay. I cannot wait until the day that me and Spencer are on the Olympia stage competing against one another, because what he just fucking explained to you people is what we're all striving to accomplish right now when he went back to that mindset of he actually likes the feeling of being challenged. I want him to elaborate on that because what do you tell a guy or a gal who has an issue? Was that always a character trait for you, Spencer? Or were you oh, once a pussy? Yeah. Were you once a weak little scrawny scrub or were you always an alpha? I want you to no. elaborate on, tell the people on how that is developed or can it be, or is it a, are you born with it? Tell them. I think if I'm being honest, I think there are times where, especially at the beginning where everyone starts somewhere, I was not an alpha to begin with, but I had that alpha mindset where I'm going to improve. I'm going to get better. 
And that's what made me an alpha because I didn't start as one. I don't think anyone can really say they started at one, but what is your mindset from the beginning? Is it that you're going to just show up and just kind of be mediocre or are you going to train and be your best? You're going to become your best, constantly strive to be the best. Alpha's mentality is not because you're going to be weak. You're just going to do enough to pass by. Alpha mentality is because you show up every damn day, whatever it is. It doesn't matter if it's bodybuilding. It doesn't matter if it's for your job. It doesn't matter if it's for whatever performance thing you're doing in your life. Are you showing up to put out your best and be your best self? And that's where you strive every day. Because they're, they're, And this is where me and my coach go off on this conversation all the time. The amount of people that say I'm the hardest worker in the room, it's just like, cool, anyone can say that. You went to the gym today. You were the hardest worker. You did the most amount of cardio. You lifted the most amount of weight. No, the hardest worker in the room is the guy that shows up every day, puts in the work. But then when he goes home, what does he do? He still puts in the work. That's the person that is the alpha mentality that is the best in their life is because they show up every day. But then when they're not there, you know that they're still doing the work. It's not that you can say that I took a picture on Instagram and said, hey, I'm the hardest worker in the room. There's so much more behind that one picture that can truly say this person is a hard worker. This person is alpha. This person is going to be on top. But that's because we know what he does in his off seasons. We know what he does at home. We know what he does when he's not snapping a picture on Instagram. If people don't get motivated by listening to this episode, you need to get the fuck out. Hey, Spencer, what do you think about all the people, the little beta boys that you refer to? You said it, not me. It came out of your mouth, not mine. What is going on with all this Photoshop? I mean, let it's unfortunate to know that some of these guys are out here editing their photos the way that they are. But this goes back to the social media topic. And all of the body dysmorphia and the influencers and the message that they are subliminally putting off by altering every single one of their photos. What is your, because I know you don't, you don't do it. You're the real deal. I've seen you. You're, you're bringing 110% to your shit. Uh, but what do you say to the people that are out here uh, with the fake news? Basically, it's fake advertisement and it's false, false, false. It's all fake is what it is. What do you say to those people? I'm just going to say right now, like if it takes you being happy on social media by editing your photos, you're a pretty sad person overall. Like you want to be real. And that's what I've always prized myself for is like, what's going to make me different on social media is like, I'm not going to lie to people. I'll be honest, honest about everything that I am and what I do. But more specifically, it's just like, I want to be candid. I want to show you guys what it takes to get to where I'm at, but I'm not going to show you edited photos of my abs or my lats flare out to complete really disproportionate ways or i actually just saw it last night where this guy get on instagram i don't even know what the guy's instagram was never even seen the kid before because i really don't pay attention to social media that much but they were able to prove how much he edits his photos because the way that the war photos are warped where like doorways are like bending and the walls become yeah. blurry yeah it's just like <laughs> why it's just like uh, get cool. out of like, here get them it's because they they need to get they need to get that like on the photo. They need to have someone take a, an extra look at their photos. Like, oh, what the heck is that real? It's just like if you can't impress people with your physique alone, that you got a photo at it. It's just like you need to go go to the gym more, man, or you got to change something. But you know what? It's still not going to change. They're still going to do it though. You know what that that ups, that irks me more than the natty versus unnatty. Who gives two shits about your if you're natty or not? Nobody gives a flying blip. If you're amongst the elite, we don't care, but we do care about manipulating your photos and making it look as if you're something that you're not. And then when I see you in person, I'm like, is this the same dude? Because in person, you look like half of the man that you appear to look like on Instagram. So who's lying? Who's lying? I don't know. But then again, I mean, Spencer, what are your goals as far as yeah, you want to be an IFBB pro, but let's say, you know, you do that. What are your ass? I mean, you know, I don't even know what you do during the day, but like, you know, a lot of us that get into this sport don't have a lot of capital to really, you know, we're not coming into sports with sponsorships. All that hard work is earned. Sponsorships are earned through hard work. But um, what is what are your goals as far as, you know, do you want to do this as a career or are you just kind of pushing your limits or I'm just I curious think, to know uh, coming from a fellow. <clears throat> I think for me currently right now is uh, no matter what pro card that's happening, like it has been planned. And since it's been planned, it already happened. 
it's just a matter of, has it happened yet. But the main thing after that is just uh, definitely take some consideration if I really want to take in the pro leagues farther. Um, I know my coach talks to me all the time. He's just like, you could take it somewhere. And uh, if I can, I would love to see that happen. Um, I think when it comes to the pro leagues, especially the guys are going to be making it to the Olympia stage. Yeah, they work their ass off. But there is quite a bit of genetics, you know, and there's definitely some like politics to play with it. But overall, like if I really can push it there, why not? But then uh, it's the same thing that uh, what's his name? I'm thinking the redhead guy from the UK. He's worked with Brandon Harding. He just got his pro card. He won the amateur Olympia in like South America or something to get his pro card. And that's just where I believe in his mindset, where it's just like, you know what, be your best, believe that you're at your best. And that's just where I do want to understand my limits too. And that's just where for him, his goal is to make it to Olympia and be the best men's physique competitor in the world. But that's just where he wants to also be real with himself. And it's to the point where he has worked his ass off to get a pro card. Like he looks outstanding especially seeing where he came from but that's just where he's like yeah i'll compete in the pro leagues probably for a couple of years but that's just where if you're in the pro leagues and every single year for five years you're never winning a pro show you're not even close like what's the point of continuing to push there that doesn't mean you don't stop bodybuilding like it's just maybe on a competitive level at that level he may not be able to make it you know all the way to the olympia but that's where he's still going to be his best as a bodybuilder to get to that point if it doesn't happen if it's really uh, that unrealistic um, that's just where um, he will put his bodybuilding talents in places elsewhere where he has his online coaching business. He has supplement sponsors, clothing sponsors, and everything else that he does. And that's just where, you know, all these bodybuilders, like the money, we don't do it for the money. We do it because we love the sport of bodybuilding. We love what we're doing. And that's just where, when you're asking me, like, what am I doing it for? Where do I see myself with it? Yes, I want to get a pro card. That is the goal. That is pretty much my ultimate goal currently. But that's just where once I achieve goals in my life, that's where my vision is raised. And then what is the next goal? And the next goal you can be sure is going to be bigger than that. So once I get the pro card, the pro card is the plan is to continue competing as a pro, maybe take a year off, you know, to put on some more quality size in the pro leagues, but we'll see where I can take it. But then I do have to face the reality of where my limits could potentially be. But until I get to that point, you can be damn right, rest assured, I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to diet the way I'm supposed to diet. I'm going to build muscle and get to the point where I can be competitive in the pro leagues. But then once I get to that point, if I hit my ceiling, that doesn't mean I'm just going to fall off. There's going to be other ways that I'm going to use my talents, things I love to do with bodybuilding. And it's probably going to be helping other people to do the same. I think what I hear you saying is bodybuilding is a... It, it develops you, it develops characteristic, it, it develops skills, it, it, you know, it shows off your dedication and your discipline. And that's what other people see in you, you know, just because one door closes, maybe the competitive side of bodybuilding closes, other doors will open. Before we get off, let's amp up this summer shredding because he's like, oh, pro card, but he has, he's competing. He's eight weeks out from seven or whatever it is. Summer shredding in Houston, out. it's a big show. He's competed in the show before. I want to know because I'm going to be there. And I'm going to have a fellow com client myself, and we're coming for Spencer's head. Mm -hmm. All right? So I need to know what classes, what divisions, what are the goals, what are you bringing to the table? I know you're, you're prepping your ass off. You're one of the most hardest workers I know. But you got to understand with due diligence, you're talking to an IFBB pro. I'm gonna, we're going to be oh, yeah. competing against each other someday. So I need to know <clears> – <throat> I like to know different people's mentality – when they're really in the zone and you are you're eight weeks seven weeks out that is if you're not in the zone now you're fucked you know so i want to know what divisions what classes what are the goals for this show because you're not going to get a pro show if you shit on this show you know if you oh, get sure. shit on, on this show you know what i'm saying you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board but i know i i don't think that's the goal i don't think you want to be shit on on this show i think you want to be doing the shit on other people <laughs> anyway go answer the question no, you're good. Um, well, that, that was my goal, honestly. And that's, that's what I tell my coach all the time. I dream about it. It's just, I can't wait to show up down to Houston. Cause I know a lot of people in that area. I have a lot of friends out there and people that go to this show just before all for the alpha Lee vibes. I want to walk into alpha Lee, well, alpha land now and just, everyone's going to be scared. Everyone's going to be like, damn, I hope that guy's not in my class. For the record, I am five foot six and a half. I'm competing in five foot seven, I believe, for men's physique, unless, you know, like we lose a little bit of height and everything. But Good. you uh, won't be going like, against my guy. Yeah. So I'm five foot six and a half, five foot seven, competing in whatever class it is for classic. 
they don't really have a weight cap, but currently I'm 172 pounds. Um, we'll see how much you weigh in about seven weeks. So you're doing classic, not men's physique. I'm doing both. I'm doing men's wow. physique and classic. So wow, doing the old fashioned double Dutch uh, crossover, are we? All right, <laughs> the front double bicep. Let's go. We brought up the arms <laughs> just for this. Look at them, boys. <laughs> Jared's going to beat your ass. Anyway. <laughs> Start the trash I'm talk kidding. early. See, and that's, yeah, that's the competitive spirit because we're all going in here and we're going to, this will be actually the first time that I've actually been able to meet Spencer live in the flesh. That's another thing we use social media too is as a collective, we refer to this community. Most of my friends in the bodybuilding community, those relationships were spawned off of Instagram. Okay. And since then, you know, we've come to really build something great here. It's like, I don't have the same coach Spencer has. I'm not a part of that team, but I've met Brady and I've met some of the members of their crew in there. And I love what it is that they're doing. So why wouldn't I want it to support them and their success when all they're doing is reciprocating that same energy. And, you know, we, we love this sport because we know what it does. So that's just great to hear for sure. But yeah, we're coming for his head. No, yeah, yeah. Be, I'll, tell you, I'll tell your buddy, dude. I'll tell he's the taller. Guy he's like, he's uh, five, ten, five, nine. He's taller. He's not going to be in your class. If y'all end up competing against each other, it's going to be for the overall, which will be awesome. That would be exciting. That would be exciting. I'll catch him in the overall. There you yeah. Go. Some... You've got to win your class, and he has to win his class. That would be some good content for sure. <laughs> well, we're coming. We're bringing the Weight Room Podcast to Houston, pal. Yeah, so, we'll I mean, we're going to be interviewing winners only. So we're, <laughs> we're going to be interviewing winners only, pal. So hopefully it's a follow up. Yeah, interview. hopefully it is a follow up. If he takes care of business, it will be. There you go. But uh, no, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, it's it's just kind of one thing before we head out here. I like the uh, I like that, that that we can be here, even though, like Cam said, we're you know, you're, you're both of you are have on different kind of paths of the same to the same goal. You have different coaches, right. different this, that, and the others, but it's the same motivation, the same goal, the same drive. And that's what I think I love about bodybuilding. Even though I'm not a competitor, it's something that draws me to it. I look forward to that show. I, yeah, I look forward to meeting, meeting you in person, hopefully meeting uh, a lot of competitors. Look but, forward uh, to seeing you down there. Definitely, man. Thanks for coming on. And uh, Cam, thanks for joining me here today. Go get you, uh, go get that workout yeah. in. And well, you hear yeah. that music in the background? Here's the deal with Spencer. Spencer, go ahead and give me some motivation. I'm about to hit legs right now. I need some, some lay something on me right now. And I need it. Workout <clears> words of, uh, motivation. Let the people hear this too. Say it. Whatever it's going to be. You, are you about to squat? I'm not about to like squat. Pressing? I'm about to warm. No, no, I just walked in. I need some words of encouragement. I just walked in. Dude, I'm, man, with, I'm, I'm standing gonna... across the aisle of Steven, my training coach right now. Just give me some energy. I'm just going to say, man, you better fucking lift your ass off. Let's go. Today is leg day. This is the biggest and the best lifting day of the week. Incorporates the most amount of muscle group. You already have some sick ass legs, but go and grow them some more, man. Like everyone's got chicken legs unless you're the Mr. Olympia. <laughs> Thank you. Thank there you, you Fred. Thank you, That's buddy. It. I love it. <laughs>